SmackDown opens with, uh, again, we've talked about how the show can be schizophrenic and you will see things, fantastic things, and then you will go the other way. Well, they opened up with the fantastic. Roman Reigns, the Usos, and Paul Heyman. And they come out and they get the big entrance and MSG is full for that taping. They announced just under 15,000. That's what they consider filling up MSG these days because of the giant set. And the boxes. And the and the boxes and all that stuff. But anyway, I thought Reigns was great. But he came, what a heel and a stone face. And he's it, it basically goes through letting Paul grovel and answer his questions. The WWE runs New York. Yes, it does, my travel chief. <laughs> Who runs the WWE? You do, my travel chief. Then that means the travel chief runs New York City. So MSG, acknowledge me. Boo. Great. St- and then suddenly, boom, here comes Brock Lesnar's music and the people go batshit. And he does the long, slow walk to the ring and around and and face-to-face with Roman Reigns. The Usos step in front. Paul Lee's trying to be the little weasel, hype man, slimy, reasoning with him. Of all titles, why this one? And so I guess the, the deal that they're doing is that Brock asked Paul Lee there why he didn't tell Roman Reigns that Brock was going to be at SummerSlam. So now Brock is stooged that Paul supposedly knew, and Roman Reigns looked askance at that. And did the audio blank out for you? Because I was having reception yeah. issues. I had it happen a few times, and the first time it happened, I thought, okay, he must have said shit or something. And the second time, I thought it must have been a crowd chant because it went on for a while. Well, that... It, I was having, when we get to the AEW Rampage show, I was having reception issues uh, on my cable. Uh, and more technology trying to screw me. But this sounded like an audio edit, so it may have been the crowd saying something. But anyway, nevertheless, um, Reigns basically fucking gave Paul Lee the stink face, snatched the belt away from him, and walked out and took the Usos with him. <laughs> and then... God damn, Paul Heyman is a genius. God, he's so good. He starts speaking to Brock. You can t- in his voice, he's crying, and he manages to muster up a little bit more courage as he starts talking. When Brock's smiling and he's thinking that he's going to get away with this, and he gives Brock the big intro that he used to, and he gets the big pop. And then, I mean, just what a performance. And then they got just enough out of Brock Lesnar verbally that that's all you need. He needs to be a man of few words. And Brock said, Paul, accept my challenge to Roman Reigns before you get fired, right? You got five seconds. Oh, shit. And then, and I'll tell you what, I got to be honest with you, Brock is a... He's, I've always said he's a physical marvel, but he's keeping himself in fantastic shape. He bent right over, and it looked like the picture of Bruno Sammartino picking up Haystacks Calhoun in the garden in 62. He got Paul oh, Heyman on. up. <laughs> <laughs> Haystacks Heyman? He got Haystacks Heyman up. <laughs> Now, I was just talking about how much it outweighed at one point earlier in this program. And 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 Paul, by the way, is a couple inches shorter than I am. And when I was competing in the ring against him in 1989 in WCW, I was at the time probably about 230. And I would say that I had probably 225-ish at that point. Because I'd, I'd, I'd lost some weight after I recovered from my previous knee surgery. So the point is, 225-ish, and he was easily 20 pounds smaller than me. My biggest was 275. Is there any way in the world that Paul Heyman weighs less than 275 pounds now? I don't know. I'm not going to guess. Maybe it's just the suits are blousey. I want to wish Paul Heyman a happy Yom Kippur. 
Well, there you go. And he's had too many kippers, it looks like. <laughs> well, you're on a roll today. Anyway, <laughs> so he picks fucking Haystacks Heyman up to give him the, I'm loving this segment, to give him the, the F5, and there Roman Reigns is back, and as he turns around, comes in with the Superman punch, and Brock took care of Paul. He went backwards, took Paul with him, and he's strong enough to do that. And he put him down right. And and that's the first bump that I've seen Paul take in years now. But anyway, uh, and I don't know how long Brock will be out from his hernia surgery because his balls are up in his watch pocket. But uh, no, that, that can be scary. Hey, Dr. Death, when he was a baby face, we did a spot one time where he had to press me up over his head. And then one of the boys, Bobby or Stan, was going to hit him with the racket in the back and bam. And he was going to sell that and drop me. I'm like, how the fuck am I coming down doc? He said, don't worry. I got you. And I was, this was a period of time where I was more like 250. He had me up over his head pressed. And when I heard the whack, cause I've got my eyes closed, right? I'm in his hands. When I heard the whack, it was like he did the reverse of the clean and jerk. He brought me down to his chest as he crumpled. And then when he dropped to his knees to sell the racket, he set me right down was strong enough to do that. But anyway, so boom, Superman punch. He drops Paul Lee, and then Brock basically fucking comes out from under everything, and Roman escapes, but he throws the Usos every fucking where and cleared the ring out, and people are going batshit. This was fucking... This was a... <laughs> This could have been a raw, a good raw segment in the Attitude Era or any, any other year. This was the top guys interacting in an exciting way and Brock, the new big baby face, coming in and getting a piece of the manager and throwing the flunkies around. What would you think? I love this. This was perfection. Couldn't ask for every participant to, to have done any better. Paul Heyman is... You know, I see all these different people like an AEW, like a Taz or an Alex Abrahantes, and I always go, oh, this guy's one of the best guys. He's one of the MVPs. And then you see Heyman. And this isn't to take anything away from those guys because I love them. I think they're great. Heyman's at another level. Yeah. And the facial expressions, always knowing what to say, even the little things like when he responds to Roman Reigns and it's not directly into the microphone, just he knows the little things. When he turned, I don't know if turns the right word, in the ring when all of a sudden he started going into the Brock intro. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. It all went as well as possible. We never see him. You're take a reading bump. on his face that he's starting to realize that yeah. he may actually get by with this if he keeps talking fast enough, which is exactly what, if this was all real, would be dawning on, he, on him at that time. Yeah, it was perfect. And I... Have been saying this for a while, and I think he was whimpering. He was, you know, he absolutely was. And I'm going to say one more thing about this, and I've been saying this for a while, and I guess because it's a WWE guy, people sometimes want to pretend it's not true. Roman Reigns is so fucking good. Yeah. And he feels like a big star and like a world champion. And he's, he's just perfect. I mean, I wish they had more people on the roster that would. I mean, you know what? I shouldn't say that because everyone he's worked with, he's gotten the most out of, I think, him and Heyman for the last year in that WWE system. But the rest of the show is the problem. Him and Heyman, and I'll include the Usos and Brock Lesnar here, this is all great shit. The problem is the rest of the show. Well, speaking of the rest of the show, the next thing I believe you alluded to earlier, I thought it was a 10-man tag, but I forgot Booger doesn't wrestle. He just plays the guitar. I saw Booger. I saw Shaky Nakamura. I saw Sami Zayn. He's going to talk. It's a 10-man tag or an 8-man tag or whatever. I skipped this because I did not care. Did you care? I did not care. We didn't care. No one cared. 